Here's the thought, what's it like to use Photoshop on Apple Vision Pro? Now, Photoshop is not native to Vision OS, not even the iPad version, but Photoshop runs on my MacBook Pro, and anything on an M-Series Mac can be mirrored on Apple Vision Pro. And while wearing Apple Vision Pro, I can see and use my MacBook's trackpad and keyboard, and Apple Vision Pro is a uniquely immersive environment, making it the perfect way to view and appreciate imagery, and every photo from my iPhone is right there ready to edit. And then, just imagine it. Eye tracking and controller free hand gestures unleashed on Photoshop. It's a dream, I tell you. Literally a dream. Because so far, it's not quite real. Okay, so here's my virtual Mac screen is a 4K window. You get one window for your Mac, that's it. So if you're used to working across multiple displays with panels on one screen and images on another, just be aware this one window will have to do. But actually, for all kinds of reasons, that's more than acceptable. After all, this is not a display. This is your entire observable world, and this virtual window is as big or as small or as far away or as close at hand as you want it to be. So watch this. I'll move Photoshop to the middle of my field of view, and I'll drag one or more corners of the window to make it super big. I mean, to see Photoshop like this and what passes for the real world, I'd have to press my nose to a physical display. I say this from personal experience, by the way. Fresh out of school, my first computer was a Mac, the 1984 128K. Back then, my near vision was sufficiently good that I really did press my nose to the screen to modify individual pixels. And now, with my properly calibrated Apple Vision Pro, I think I can see just as well. This looks to me like a bigger, better, sharper experience than what I enjoyed when I actually possessed better eyes. And that's just Photoshop. You can run as many Vision OS apps as you like, which means you can have music on one side, a bunch of browsers on another, whatever. And not only am I not switching away from Photoshop, that's key, but I'm not craning my neck between monitors or having my iPhone and iPad sitting at my side. I just look around and everything is there. Now for a topic that's of special importance for anyone who uses Photoshop, resolution. And so consider this, that first Mac, it offered 175,000 pixels at a mere 72 pixels per inch. Nowadays, 16 inch MacBook Pros give you 7.7 .7 million pixels at 254 PPI. Divide 7.7 .7 million by 175,000 and you get 44. And so 40 times as many pixels in 40 years. Meanwhile, the latest iPhone packs 460 PPI, making it Apple's tiniest pixel. Until this one, Apple advertises that a single pixel on a Vision Pro measures 7.5 microns, the size of a human blood cell. Have you ever cut yourself and seen one of your blood cells? Me neither, which means more than 3,000 pixels per inch. And so across its two postage size screens, Apple Vision Pro offers more than 23 million pixels in all. Divide 23 million by 7.7 .7 million and you get three. Only, we're not talking three times as many pixels in as many years. That MacBook Pro came out last year. That kind of resolution boost in a single year isn't normal progress. It's like we're suddenly working with technology gifted to us by space aliens. Okay, settle down. Photoshop exists in a 2D window that takes up as many pixels as you give it. So probably not 23 million, but this is me talking. 40 years of Macs and 34 years of Photoshop has trained my eyes to recognize every pixel that crosses my path. And I, for one, am not even thinking about pixels when using my Apple Vision Pro. Nor am I thinking about the physical size and shape of my multiple monitors or all the other junk strewn across my shockingly cluttered workspace. I don't miss any of that. I just like having Photoshop smooth as silk right there where I want it, taking up all the space that my eyes require to feed it to my brain. 
Wait, want to see an actual demo of what it's like to immerse yourself in Apple Vision Pro, complete with native Adobe Firefly, without leaving your living room? Real casual, just wandering around seeing what's out there, not to mention what's in. Then join my Patreon, which is patreon.com slash geek now. Come on, Apple Vision Pro costs more than $3,000. Joining my Patreon costs five. Plus, there's tons more exclusive content each and every week. Join me. You'll be so glad you did. Now let's move on to actually using Photoshop on Apple Vision Pro. Not surprisingly, this breathtaking device is a member of the Apple ecosystem. It not only sees my MacBook Pro, but it responds to input from its trackpad and keyboard, not to mention any external mice and drawing tablets. So see how I'm moving my cursor inside Photoshop? Here, I'll select the lasso tool, draw a freeform selection, click generative fill, and a moment later, we have a few AI-enabled variations. The whole time, I'm seeing what I'm doing inside the lush, immersive world of Apple Vision Pro. But it gets better. If I move my cursor outside Photoshop into any of my Vision OS apps, there's that white circle, just like I might see on my iPad, which means I can control any of these windows using that same trackpad. And I can use my actual physical keyboard if I prefer it to the virtual keyboard provided by Vision OS. Okay, so that's the great news. Here's the bad news. It doesn't work the other way around. As things stand now, none of that eye tracking or controller-free gesturing for which Apple Vision Pro is so deservedly celebrate translates to Photoshop or any of the other apps running on my Mac, which is massively disappointing. Just imagine, there you are retouching and you're trying to get rid of pockmarks or moles or lens dust or just plain everyday spots. Every image has them, and despite all kinds of community recipes, nothing actually works except clicking with the spot healing brush. You know the drill. Find a spot, click on it. Find another spot, click on it. Find another spot, click. There are days when I think podcasts were invented just so I can zone out and click spots. Enter Apple Vision Pro. Thanks to its amazing space alien design, all I have to do is look at a spot and tap my fingers. I, I'm literally Cyclops from the X-Men blasting healing out of my eyes. It's not hunt down a spot and then click on it, which literally takes as long to do as it does to say. The looking is the healing. The thinking is the doing. And for at least as long as it takes your competition to shell out the thousands of dollars they never will spend on Apple Vision Pro, not to mention shed their Windows machines and buy into the whole Apple ecosystem, you are an image editing superhero. Anyway, that's what I was going to share with you today, only I can't because it's not true. Yes, you can use Lightroom on Apple Vision Pro and really actually heal spots just by looking at them, which is swell. Adobe also makes Fresco available to Vision OS, which means you can paint directly with your finger like I'm doing now. It's not pressure sensitive, not yet anyway. Still, it's pretty awesome. But I'm just saying, a dozen Lightrooms and a hundred frescoes don't add up to Photoshop. Who's up for a few takeaways? First, for spots, try out Lightroom running on Apple Vision Pro. I'll even show you that at my Patreon. Second, if you decide to shell out real money for Apple Vision Pro, probably for the immersive 3D movies and the disquieting Uncanny Valley FaceTime, it really does work as the world's best possible Macintosh display. Seriously, the screen technology will blow you away. And then hope that one day real soon, Apple sees fit to complete its so-called ecosystem by sharing Vision Pro input with the Mac. And third, let me leave you with a thought experiment. Over the next few days, go around your home or your office, not to mention your local coffee shop or sports bar, and count all the screens. Flat screen LCDs that cost thousands of dollars a piece, far more than Apple Vision Pro. And then imagine them blissfully gone to an enormous landfill or possibly forming a shiny new flat screen island out at sea, replaced by the infinite virtual screens that 
over the next decade will most assuredly melt that pixel-based noise from our everyday lives and look forward to a day somewhere along the line when we can finally zap real-world healing out of our superhero eyes, not in Lightroom, but in the fully immersive, all-powerful world of Photoshop.